Guilt and the loss that are are some, they're the same. You know, they're synonymous. And in order to be free of this world, if you are tortured by the world, if you're if you feel that the world's done things to you, if you have memories from the past or even fears about the future, what will happen? You have to start to see that these thoughts are just being represented in the world and. The teachings of the Course, if you really do the mind training of the workbook, he's showing you that the thoughts that you think you think, you think you think, and the world that you think you see are identical. They are absolutely identical. And that's why we have to forgive them, that's why we have to release them. He says you have real thoughts, but they're covered over by these attack thoughts, by right? these judgments, these grievances. And so it's like a, that's kind of like the warp bubble in here. The warp bubble is all of these unreal thoughts, and then there's the core of real thoughts. That's why the workbook's training you to see that the images you think you think, or think you see, and the thoughts you think you think are the same, and then to go inward, inward, inward to your real thoughts, the thoughts that you think with God. And that's why we have lessons like, my mind holds only what I think with God. Of course, that would have to be the escape, if I can just identify that only, the only real thoughts in my mind are the thoughts that I think with God. Everything else must be an illusion. And, and that's where the detachment comes in. You know, when people talk about meditation, sink down beneath your everyday stream of thoughts, Everything you, you think you think, just sink down deeper. Sometimes people do guided meditations where they say, imagine yourself like laying in a stream and the leaves are falling from the trees and they're landing on the stream, but you're underneath those leaves. And just watch those leaves go by. Don't identify at all with those leaves. Those are not who you are. You know, it's, you know, those guided meditations are all designed for the, at the same thing, to, to disidentify from those thoughts. And we've talked before, if, if you think you're identified with behaviors and images, even more uh, of a close identification is with the thoughts you think. If you are thinking judgmental thoughts, and you identify yourself as the thinker, of those thoughts, how could you not feel guilty? If, if the thoughts are guilt, and you identify yourself with the thinker of those thoughts, then of course you would feel guilty. Of course it couldn't really be who you really are, because God didn't create guilt. God, God didn't create a stream of guilty thoughts and say, oh, this is my beloved stream of guilt thoughts and who my well God just doesn't work that way. No, but that's not the teaching. This, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Christ. God is pleased with the Christ. But the Christ is pure love, pure innocence, not a stream of guilt thoughts. So this is why the most important thing you will ever seem to do in this so-called lifetime is mind watching and mind training. And if you think really about all the things you put your energy into, or even if you look back at your so-called dream life and <laughs> the past, and you think, well, what did I really, what did I value here? What did I put my investment in? What, what was I pouring my energy into? You know, you can see it was into a bunch of things. It was pursuing a bunch of, of pipe dreams. It was, it was holding on to these uh, kind of concepts and pursuing the concepts, believing that, oh, if I just reach such and such, then I'll be fulfilled. 
you know, Jesus says in the Course, he says, the one thing you must learn about these ego goals, these goals that the ego has given you, is that when you have achieved them, they have not satisfied you. Think of all the goals we set. We actually were told that goal setting was good, right? What are you if you don't have any goals? A lazy, no good, rotten <laughs> bum is what you are if you don't have any goals. And now we're working with the Course, and what is it asking us to do? Give up all of the goals. You know, because when you start to live as if you're giving up all your worldly goals, and your one goal becomes present peace, that's your one goal. It takes a while to practice that, because we're always associating goals with the future, right? But if now we've got to learn how to have present peace, it's a different kind of goal. That's why it seems to be a little difficult for us. When, when we're trying to, to attain this goal, we're just not used to present peace as a goal. It's, it's like a strange, weird, awkward goal. <laughs> You know, you can see the ego going, oh, come on, you know, what a waste. <laughs> what a total waste. You could do something really productive and present peace. And, but you see, that's what you've got to face. And as long as you have that doubt thought like, yeah, yeah, right, what a goal, then guess what the world is going to act out for you? It could be your parents, it could be your neighbors. It could be your spouse. What? <laughs> What's your goal? Your goal is present peace? <laughs> you know, that, that they, anyone can act it out like, you know, for you because it's just the thoughts are projecting the world that you perceive. And if you have doubt thoughts about present peace, guess where they're going to show up? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere you look. <laughs> Everywhere in the world.